let's just have a quick moment of silence for the ending of the series of videos. <laughs> So yes, this is the finale video to reacting to my subscribers' hamster cages. The reason this is going to be the very last video is because they become very repetitive. 450s, 450, 450, 450, 450, 450. You guys don't need me to critique every single one of your cages for you to be able to improve on them. And a lot of the things I am mentioning, they are pretty much the same things every single video so you kind of just have to take some of those things that I've said into account and look at your own enclosure. So within 12 hours of opening the submissions for the cage reaction video I got 500 emails and I had to sit through and go through every single one so unfortunately not everybody's enclosure is going to be included in the video. I'm very sorry about that but I just cannot talk about 500 enclosures. Once again, like I say in every video, 450 square inches of floor space is the bare minimum in North America. Personally, I do find that on the smaller side and I always recommend a larger enclosure because hamsters really do need large cages. So the first enclosure we have here is where a Syrian hamster in a bin cage with 570 square inches of floor space and they're using Carefresh for bedding. So one of the first things I would recommend is changing the wheel. I do notice you are using a flying saucer and for Syrian hamsters you're going to want to use a 8 to 12 inch flying saucer. I actually am not too sure if they even make an 8 inch flying saucer but even though the flying saucer isn't the same as a uh, regular wheel it can still actually bend your hamsters back so it's really important that it is a proper size. Another thing that I would actually suggest is I see you have a water bottle holder. I would actually just recommend getting some industrial Velcro and using that to hold up the water bottle. That way it actually can create some more room in there for you to put more things in it for your hamster. I really do like the fact that you've given your hamster quite a bit of bedding as well as you're including a sand bath in there. We have another steering hamster living in a bin cage. This time this one is 520 square inches of floor space. I do notice you are using KT Clean and Cozy, the lavender scented one. I would recommend switching that out for unscented bedding. You really don't want to be using scented beddings because it can cause respiratory issues and that's definitely not good. I really do like your setup. I do notice you said that your hamster was showing signs of being bored lately. And one thing that I could recommend is upgrading the enclosure just a bit. Because you do have a proper sized wheel in there, it is taking up quite a bit of space. So if you were to upgrade, you're going to have a lot more space to add in more things to keep your hamster busy with. The next enclosure we have here is a long-haired Syrian hamster living in a Savic Hamster Heaven, which is around 620 square inches of floor space. I actually really like that you've put quite a bit of bedding. You've basically filled it up to the base of what the Savic can provide you with. So that is good that you are trying to provide quite a bit of bedding. One thing I do notice is the wheel and it's really hard to always kind of tell on pictures how big a hamster's wheel is but from looking at it it does look very similar to a six or seven inch wheel. Keep in mind Syrian hamsters in particular need very large wheels. Eight inch at the minimum for a small Syrian and then for larger Syrians you definitely are going to want to go with an 11 to 12 inch wheel. So the next enclosure we have here is for a Syrian hamster which it appears they are living in a 20 gallon aquarium because it is 360 square inches of floor space and they are using paper based bedding in the enclosure. So first I do want to say your hamster is really super duper cute and I love the pictures of him but the enclosure unfortunately will have to be upgraded because a 20 gallon just doesn't meet the bare minimum. A 40 gallon at the bare minimum should be used when it comes to aquariums. Of course, I personally would recommend more, especially for a Syrian hamster. The next enclosure here is a dwarf hamster 
and it is 810 square inches of floor space and it looks like it's a homemade cage which is really really awesome I like that you've included a decent amount of bedding in there I actually would e add even more because of the height of the enclosure that you have you could get a little bit more use out of it by including a bit more bedding and then she can burrow a bit more which is always really fun Another thing that I would add is maybe a bit more accessories around the enclosure. I find that semi-crowded enclosures are better for hamsters because they feel a lot more safe and protected if they have kind of things to hide under or just go and chill out in. This next enclosure is for a female Syrian hamster and their enclosure is 195 square inches of floor space as well as they are using sawdust. So I do notice, unfortunately, your cage is under the bare minimum and it is quite tall, but hamsters are ground dwellers, so a cage with a lot of height really isn't what they need. They don't get any use out of it because they spend most of their life on the ground, underground. Um, a cage with height would better suit something like mice or rats. So it is super duper important that you do upgrade your hamster's enclosure, that way you can provide a proper sized wheel and more bedding. Another thing is that sawdust really isn't the best uh, substrate for your hamster. Sawdust is generally dusty, hence sawdust. And sawdust is usually made from pine and cedar, which is not a safe wood shaving. The next enclosure we have is for a Russian dwarf hamster named Willow and their cage is a Savic Plaza rat and Syrian hamster cage and it comes to around 740 square inches of floor space. I really like that you have a bunch of different things for her to go around and do. You have a bunch of different hideouts, a lot of chews in there, some toilet paper tubes which are great for hamsters to just go through and have fun. Something that I would suggest is since the cage is barred, you could actually add some more platforms and levels. You can buy uh, wood ones off Amazon, I think, and that way you can make more use out of the bars and everything. As well as another thing I would add is possibly a different hideout in the sand bath. I do know you have a little toilet paper tube cut in half, but maybe something a bit bigger so then she has more privacy to uh, roll in her sand bath. The next enclosure we have here is for a Syrian hamster and his name is, is Onyx. They have a, a what I think is a 40 gallon aquarium because it is 648 square inches of floor space and they are using some Carefresh paper bedding as well as they have a 12 inch silent spinner for him which is amazing. It's great to always give your hamsters a bigger wheel. I always get asked is there such thing as too big of a wheel and the answer would be no as long as the hamster can push it the bigger the wheel the better. Overall, I do like your enclosure and I did notice you said you were looking for a sand bath. A good sand bath actually would be just to go to the dollar store and there's tons of different containers and dishes for quite cheap. There's different materials like plastic, ceramic, or glass and there's a bunch of different sizes and they all work really well for sand baths. The next enclosure is for a Syrian hamster and they are in a 50 gallon Walmart bin that they got for $20 and they use KT uh, Clean and Cozy with about seven to eight inches of bedding and then the other half has Aspen. I really like the setup. I like that you've provided a decent amount of bedding for your hamster as well as you have a sand bath in there. You have a couple of different hideouts, a nice sized wheel. One thing that I would maybe do is on the deep end of the bedding is make a platform with dowels. That way you can still stick it in there and it's not going to take away from anything like the burrowing, but they can go underneath it as well as you can put more things on top so you can make more space. You can make more, I don't know what the word is. You can make more room, I guess. You can... You, I hope you get what I mean. This enclosure here looks to be a homemade enclosure. It is 600 square inches of floor space and they use hemp for the bedding and they have a robo in here. So I actually really like the enclosure. I like that you've added a really deep substrate for your hamster as well as you have a multi-chamber hideout in here. Some things that I would maybe suggest is I see your sand bath. Robos actually naturally come from a very sandy area. So I would really suggest a pretty decently sized sand bath for them that has like a hideout in there as well. And then the other thing is, I think that is, I've never seen a flying saucer like that, but it looks very cool. 
but for row bulbs I wouldn't necessarily recommend a flying saucer just because of how speedy they are and how often they end up flying off. An enclosed wheel like a silent runner or a woden wheel would be much better suited for a robo since they can't get thrown out of the wheel. Here we have a Syrian living in an Ikea detox which is great. The first thing I do notice is I would put a lot more bedding, especially for a Syrian to be able to burrow in. You want to have a minimum of six inches in a section. I personally would go for a little bit more because it's been found that a lot of hamsters don't start actually burrowing until they've been given 10 plus inches of bedding. So I really do like that you do have a little sand area though and you have a nice sized wheel, but I would add in more bedding. The next enclosure here is for a Syrian hamster and it is 200 square inches of floor space. Um, I do know you said you can't afford to upgrade right now, but I would really look into bin cages. They can be a cheap but large option. Um, they're definitely really budget friendly. Another thing that I did notice is you have a wire wheel in there, which really is not safe. Hamsters need a solid surface to run on because wire and mesh wheels can cause a bumblefoot as well as they can get limbs caught in them so they really just aren't safe. The next cage is a bin cage with 552 square inches of floor space and one thing that I did notice is you said you have a robo hamster living in here but based off looking at the pictures you actually would have a Campbell's dwarf or hybrid dwarf. So it definitely would not be a robo, but the cage is still suitable. So the next enclosure is for a Syrian hamster and based on their measurements, it would only be 70 square inches of fuller space. For a Syrian hamster or any hamster, in fact, that would be much too small. You definitely are going to want to upgrade your enclosure. With 70 square inches of floor space, you really do not have the room to add everything a hamster truly needs in their enclosure, especially a proper wheel for a Syrian hamster. The next enclosure we have is two 30 gallon tanks for two hamsters. Uh, both are Syrians, they're in separate enclosures. Um, with 30 gallon aquariums, I don't know what the exact square inches are, I'm not sure if it is over or under the bare minimum, um, so I can't exactly say anything too much about that. It is on the smaller side for Syrians if it is closer to the bare minimum, but it is nice that you have included big wheels in both of them for the Syrians. I also like that you've used these really neat uh, little wooden box type things as platforms. That's really awesome. One thing I would suggest is more bedding. So this next enclosure here is a Syrian living in a 10 gallon aquarium. They do realize that the aquarium is too small and they currently are trying to look for a detox. So that is not really my concern. I did notice that you said you got a new wheel for him because your previous wheel was a wired bar wheel, but the new wheel you actually got is a wire mesh wheel and it is very similar to a wired barred wheel. A wire mesh wheel actually can cause the exact same things a wired barred wheel uh, can cause. They can get toes and nails stuck into the mesh as well as it can cause a bumblefoot. You really want to use a solid wheel with hamsters. So this next enclosure is really awesome. So it is the Iris Holiday Storage Bin and I don't see too many people using these bins, which I highly would recommend them. They have around a thousand square inches of floor space, which is really awesome, but you generally can only get them around Christmas time. So a Russian Campbell's Dwarf lives in here and they have paper-based bedding. It looks like they have a deep side and one thing that I would add is just a bit more accessories, maybe some more tubes and hides, some things for the middle as well, because once again, I think hamsters tend to like more semi-crowded enclosures. So this next enclosure is another bin cage and it has 507 square inches of floor space for a Syrian hamster. So there are a couple of things I am going to mention, one being the bedding once again. You definitely want to have a nice deep area for them to be able to burrow in. 
The next thing is I would definitely put in more accessories. Maybe you just haven't gotten around to it yet, but you can make a lot of things yourself if you are on a budget. Um, especially you want a nice hideout for your hamster to be able to sleep in. And then the next thing would be the wheel. Uh, once again, you want nothing less than an eight inch solid running wheel. 11 to 12 inch is more preferred. So this next enclosure, I'm not too sure if there's two Roborowskis living in here because you did say Peppa Kiwi. So I'm not sure if the whole name is Peppa Kiwi or if you have two Robos named Peppa and Kiwi. And you did say that the enclosure was 209 square inches of floor space. So if there is two Robos living in here, which I personally do not recommend pairs of hamsters at all, but because they are dwarfs, if you are going to be housing them together, they really do need to be in a extremely large enclosure, something with around 800 square inches of floor space. And they really need to have double of everything to prevent fighting. Uh, I think you only have one wheel in here. So if you do have two Robos, it's super important that they each have their own wheel and everything. So the next enclosure we have here is for a Syrian hamster and they have a rosewood Pico cage which only has 285 square inches of floor space. I've seen quite a few people actually have these enclosures and they just are not large enough. I know they have all these fun like ramps and levels, but those do not count towards floor space and hamsters don't necessarily need floors and ramps. It's floor space that they need to be able to run in everything. So I definitely would recommend you upgrade your hamster's enclosure. That way you can provide a proper sized uh, flying saucer as well as you can put a lot more of the necessities that hamsters need. So this next enclosure is a 10 gallon uh, aquarium with a Syrian hamster living in it. Um, I know you said your hamster really loves her cage and you have a 12 inch wheel and it looks like you've tried to put a decent amount of bedding, which is awesome. Both of those things are needed but a 10 gallon just isn't enough for a hamster. If you look at the size of your hamster and compare it to the floor space, it just, it isn't enough. Hamsters really, really, really need large enclosures. So this enclosure here is a 664 square inch uh, bin cage with a robo living in it. I love the fact that the picture, your robo is going so fast that it's blurry. I love that. And you also said that you were given a six inch exercise ball, but you didn't want to use it for your hamster, which is great. So you went ahead and actually turned it into kind of like a little cave digging thing, which is awesome. And this is something I recommend if you have a hamster ball and you don't know what to do with it because you don't want to use it, you can do this. One thing I just recommend is making sure that you've plugged up any of the ventilation slits so that your hamster's toes and feet don't get caught in them. But it looks like you've done a pretty good job with your enclosure and you've also provided some deep substrate, which is great. So like my last cage reactions video, I wanted to include at the end of the video, some cages that I had nothing to critique about, or there was nothing that I would change about it because I think they are all doing a really good job. And it's a great way to give you guys some inspiration. So the first enclosure we have has 1,116 square inches of floor space, which is really, really awesome. They also are using deep substrate. They have aspen, moss, soil, and sand. So they have a variety of different textures in there. I love all of the sprays, which are great for foraging and everything. And overall, I really like it. So this is a Ikea Lin, I can't, I don't know how to say it. Limon, <laughs> Lim lemon, <laughs> with 877 square inches of floor space for their Syrian hamster. They have deep substrate, a sand bath, a decent sized wheel, as well as a bunch of different accessories and everything. The next enclosure is a 600 square inch bin cage and they have a winter white dwarf living in here and they went with a naturalistic setup, which is great because I find a lot of people find it hard to do a more naturalistic setup in a bin cage. So this is a really, really great example of how to make a more naturalistic enclosure with a bin. So this next enclosure has around 1,600 square inches of floor space and I'm pretty sure this was uh, some type of bookshelf that they turned into a hamster cage. It's really awesome because they have this lower section which they are able to put 
a ton of substrate it's kind of just like a burrowing area almost for the hamster and i think that's really awesome as well as they have a giant area for sand and everything so i think it's a great cage Next we have a IKEA Detoff and I might be a little biased but I really like when people do naturalistic enclosures. I find them to be the most enriching for hamsters. They do have a dwarf hamster in here and it looks like they have provided quite a few things for their hamster to do. This next enclosure is 1,200 square inches of floor space. It's the Paw Hut three tier cage and they have a robo living in here. I really like the amount of things they've put in here as well as they put some substrate even on the levels and platforms um, so there's just like a lot for their rowboat to be able to do. This enclosure is 1500 square inches of floor space which is awesome and they actually made this with the IKEA Limon, <laughs> Linman <laughs> tabletops and so they have some perspect doors and an open top. The only thing that I get sketched out about is open top cages but everything else in the enclosure is really really awesome they have a lot of different things for their hamsters to do it looks like they have sand at the front and then they have quite a bit of deep substrate at the back so here we have a, another ikea detoff and they have a syrian living in here they have a 10 inch wheel deep substrate a sand bath Another thing I just wanted to show you guys is the way they made their lid. I think it's a really good idea and maybe can inspire some of my other IKEA Detoff owners for their future lids or anybody who's interested in making a new lid for their IKEA Detoff. So once again, we have another IKEA Detoff, which is awesome. I love seeing a lot of IKEA Detoffs because they're cheap and they're large enclosures. So this enclosure looks really awesome. You have some really nice pieces of wood in there as well as you've put a really great thick amount of bedding which is just awesome. And it looks like you have just a lot of little cork logs and bendable bridges for your hamster to go under. And I think you've done an awesome job. So these next two cages I thought were really cool and creative, but they're hand-built cages for their two Syrian hamsters. Um, so they're separated one on top of the other. It has 974 square inches and it looks like the lids come down, which is really cool, but they've also uh, put a uh, plexiglass front so they can put uh, some deep substrate on one side. But I just thought it was a very interesting way to make two enclosures. So we have another Living World Eco green enclosure and I think this is the size large because it has 1,488 square inches of floor space and they've really put a lot of stuff in here as well as some deep substrate and multi-chamber hideout sand bath. So we have another IKEA Detoff which is just awesome. So they have some deep substrate on one side and they have some magazine holders stacked as kind of like levels. I think that's really cool. On one side they have a nice big sand bath and overall I really like it. So that concludes our cage reactions video. I can finally relax and not have to do another one of these. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope no one's too upset if their cage wasn't included. It is very hard to try and include as many cages as possible because the video would just be hours and hours long. So I very much apologize if your enclosure wasn't included. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Cheers. Oh my god, this has been recording! I can't remember the exact name. What the heck is this cage called? What the heck is it called? <laughs> so like my last subscribe... <laughs> so like my last reaction... No, what is it called? Cage reaction video. Okay. No thing. No thing. No thing. <laughs> I wonder if they can fit. I think. Are those the cardboard or some tubes? <laughs> oh, wait. No, it's not another living was this a living yeah and i like that they've put i think 